How's it going everybody? Ad Ricker here. When the company Flashforge originally emailed me asking if I wanted to try one of their 3D printers, they were probably assuming I knew something about 3D printing. I didn't. So this video is about the Adventure 3, but it's also about my process learning 3D printing from scratch, from zero knowledge to being able to make some pretty cool models. When I first got this 3D printer and printed my first couple models, I was so intrigued by it. It's, it, I sat and watched it for hours, I did. So we're starting off with the Adventure 3. Now the print bed is 150 by 150 by 150 millimeters. The bed is self-leveling, which means you don't have to level the bed manually. It has a detachable nozzle with just one clip. It's stainless steel tube material with fast heating. It has auto filament feeding with enclosed built-in filament cartridge. A removable and flexible heated print bed, only 45 decibels, which is pretty quiet for operation. A two megapixel HD camera for remote monitoring a full color touchscreen and 3D cloud capabilities. The layer resolution is 0.1 to 0.4 millimeters with a nozzle diameter of 0.4 millimeters. It has a single extruder that can reach up to 235 degrees Celsius and a heated bed that can reach up to 100 degrees Celsius. It's got a door that you can close when you're printing so you're not gonna be smelling a bunch of smelly ABS or what other you know, smelly material you're printing. Now on the side of the printer is where you uh, mount your filament. So, we open up the door and we're using their uh, PLA that they sent us along with the printer. So you get one spool of PLA. I don't know, it could be any color. I got red and it's just a starter spool. This is only 0.3 kilograms. And uh, then you fit it in to here and you can already tell I've used quite a bit of it. And then feed the filament right up through where that yellow arrow is. And then from there, you load the filament and it kind of takes control and uh, it'll heat up the extruder and eventually start feeding this up around. So it's really easy to load the filament and then you just put the door back on. Um, however, this is a one kilogram sized hatchbox uh, ABS filament, white. And it does not fit inside of the Adventure 3. So I actually bought a lot of these ABS rolls knowing that that would happen. I had read some of the reviews. So what I got is just an aftermarket spool holder, just like that. And you can actually feed regular ABS from a spool like this, just like this. Just have it right next to it, open the door, feed it in, and it'll, it'll actually rotate and feed just fine. So that's what I've been doing recently. But for all of my PLA stuff that I printed, I did use their PLA roll that they provided. So that's just something you gotta keep in mind. If you have one kilogram size spools, uh, you can't fit it inside. So I'm gonna turn this back around. We're gonna turn it on, we're gonna load a filament, and we're gonna start a box. We hit filament and then hit load filament. Now the extruder does heat up pretty fast and it'll reach 200 C in about 50 seconds. Once it's completely loaded the filament, you'll see it start to extrude from the hot end. And you know you have got it going. So I'm gonna hit, okay. This is where we can connect to our network. So I have my Wi-Fi connected, which means that I can load uh, different files directly from my computer from my slicing software into this thing wirelessly. That's a really cool function. Using Wi-Fi also allows you to monitor prints with the built-in camera, the two megapixel camera I spoke about earlier. Or you can also connect to this with the Polar Cloud service and you can monitor things even remotely. Now if we go straight to build, we can see our memory, 6.48 gigabytes. So it's got a pretty sizable memory and we can select there. Now it comes stock with one model. Now there are a bunch of these files from previous printing sessions, but let me go to the one it came programmed with. So we're gonna to go to the PLA 20 by 20 millimeter box. And here we can start printing. And we're gonna hit build on this box and it's gonna start heating. Now the bed's gonna heat up first and it's gonna heat up to, I think about 60 degrees Celsius, which is what this is pre-programmed to do for PLA. Then the extruder is gonna heat up right after that. that. The extruder heats up much faster than the bed, so that's nice. 
Now you can also hear that it's not that loud, but there's a little bit of a vibration going on sometimes. So I find that the door is what's vibrating. If I put a piece of tape right here, that kind of quiets it down a little bit. Now for PLA, I'm using the fan. So the fan is right next to the hot end, kind of cooling off the filament as it extrudes. PLA, you could use a fan, but with ABS, I've had mixed results. There have been some models where I could not use a fan at all, and there are some where I could use the fan and sometimes it was even necessary to get a better build. The software I use is by Flash Forge, it's called Flash Print, and it's just a slicing software. So basically you already get a model from some other software. Take that .stl, input it into Flash Print, and then you can use your parameters to get your Adventure 3 to work exactly how you want it to. So I haven't really found the need to use any other slicing software right now. I'm just using exclusively Flash Print. Now occasionally I have heard popping. There's like a popping sound that happens. And that's sometimes because I think my extruder is too low. So the hot end is actually touching the bed and preventing the filament from extruding properly. So calibrating sometimes has to be done if that's gonna be an issue. If you keep hearing that popping and it's not pulling the filament up, it means the filament can't escape somewhere. And if you don't have a clog, then you probably have a, a nozzle or a hot end that is not calibrated to the bed height. All right, we're gonna let this cool down in a second. I don't wanna reach and get it right exactly now. So instead, I'll show you some models that have turned out in the past that I've made that are pretty much all back here, all the ones that I'm really excited about. So check this werewolf out. This is the coolest looking werewolf ever. He's made a PLA, the same red PLA that's in the machine now. I broke a finger, whoops, didn't mean to do that, but um, trying to get some of the supports out. You print with supports, when you have a model like this with overhanging features. Those overhangs are anything usually over 45 degrees. Printers cannot print like on top of nothing and they have to print on top of previous layers. So if you print supports, which are just like very brittle beams sticking up from the bottom to the top of your, your uh, model and then pick them off when you're done, that's really the only way that your printer is gonna be able to print like say this werewolf's arm how else would they start the fingers floating in free space if they didn't have something already there linking it to the ground? Um, also, this is what's called a raft. Uh, now, I kept the raft on just because it makes it easier for this guy to stand up. The dragon was ABS. So this is white ABS. I had to print him a couple times because he was a little finicky, and you can tell that he's very detailed and potentially fragile. And that's why this and this and this, like the tips of his wings actually did break off. So I glued them back on. Now it's not a perfect print. You can kind of see some of the layers. Maybe I could have printed this at a higher resolution and you wouldn't see so many layers. Um, there's also some parts where it seems like maybe there's a little bit of a shift in the layers, like almost something got jostled back and forth. And that brings me to one of the issues. I was trying to print this guy and realized that the print bed had shifted. So if you're in here, and I'll show you how this is, when you're pulling this out, you take your finger and you, you kind of like press into this little tab and it pops out. If you haven't pushed that in all the way, which is easy to not do, like to, to not get it snug in there, that means that the print bed could be wiggling back and forth independent of the actual base of the printer. So um, that's caused me to have a couple prints fail in the past. So here's the starburst here, uh, I mean uh, this uh, box, and you just bend it. So you bend this malleable, this, this bendable little print bed here, and it pops right off. And then here's just that excess when it started. You can see the honeycomb design, the interior there. So I think it's only a 15% infill. And here's another example of PLA. This one took a while, this was about eight hours. Um, this is Yoda, of course, and um, he kind of features this very interesting design Kind of like this spider webby, the entire thing was made without supports. I tried supports the first time and I was just, it was impossible to get them out of all this. Like the inside, impossible. So yeah, here's a skull that I printed and actually I featured this on one of my live streams recently. Um, this is actually a, like a, a holder for stuff. You put SD cards in there or you make it a little bigger, you scale it up and then it's a pencil holder or something like that. 
So this was done also without supports. I left the raft on. So again, it's easy to, to place on things and to sit. The only place it didn't print so great was right here. And some of you helped me out in the live stream, said it might be too hot on the extruder. Battery holder, so this is functional, but also two, actually three parts. Um, this was the label plus the actual box part of this thing, plus a little battery cradle that sticks out that allows for batteries to continue to fall out. And what 3D printing review would be complete without Benchy. Uh, this is Benchy, the little, 3D model tugboat or whatever it is. And this is a design basically, why it shows up so much in reviews is because it features a lot of different uh, possible points that your printer could fail or, or at least places where you can compare printer to printer to see how well it prints. So this was using a fan with ABS, which is not what I normally do. I don't normally wanna use a fan, but this time it worked out and uh, Minimal string, I suppose, but otherwise, you know, like that right there looks pretty good to me. I've had some some other types of ships not do so hot in this, this sort of area. So the resolution wasn't like abnormal, but um, I did have a few odd things happen within there. Some of these layers went all haywire. So I like the Adventurer 3, especially as a first time printing option. It prints a lot of different things, you know, ABS, PLA, wood filament, nylon, uh, metal. However, it doesn't print TPU. And that was one of the things actually that I thought, oh, I'm gonna be able to print TPU for, for drone parts because I use a lot of TPU style drone parts. Um, no, it does not print TPU. Uh, it just kind of gets jammed up in there. It's like trying to feed wet spaghetti in there and. It just logs up. So I like that it has Wi-Fi because my computer's in the complete other room and I'm so glad I don't have to be swapping USB drives and stuff. It's also cool that it can use the cloud or uh, you know various other network options with uh, Polar Cloud and stuff like that. The included 3D printing bed seems great for PLA, but with ABS, it's just really hard to get that material off. Really hard. Um, I'm not sure how else you would do it. I tried acetone, I tried a razor blade, I tried all that stuff, and all I did was just damage the print bed. So if you're trying to print ABS, I would almost I would almost suggest you use printer's tape with some glue. Makes it a little easier. There are also some uh, printable mounts that you can stick onto this where it allow you to have a little extension and then you can fit the roll, the uh, like a larger roll on top of it and make it a little more form fitting, but I don't mind having something just kind of hanging off like this. Now, I'm not gonna lie, there's also been a time or two where I was trying to print PLA and that popping sound would happen. It was extruding fine, but it just seemed to be pop, 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 pop. So I'm not sure why that's the case sometimes. Uh, it happens worse with PLA to my knowledge, uh, but I've been printing almost primarily with ABS since I got my ABS rolls in the mail. So now anytime it pops, it's, it's usually because the extruder is just way too low in the print bed. It needs to be recalibrated. So anyway, I like the design. I like that it's all enclosed, which means that you have your heated bed for ABS and stuff like that. But that also means that you're not gonna have environmental factors uh, messing with the temperature of your prints or something like that or your print bed. So it's all contained. It's going to keep its heat. It's going to keep its temperature in there really nice. Thank you for watching and thank you to Flash Forge for getting me into the hobby of 3D printing. Never thought I would be uh, doing this type of thing, but I think it's really cool that they made a printer that's capable but also user friendly enough uh, for someone like me who doesn't know a thing about 3D printing to actually get to start making some pretty interesting models within a week's time or even less. Check the link in the video description for the Adventure uh, 3 by Flash Forge or some of the other Flash Forge 3D printers as well. Take care everybody and until next time, happy printing.